Okay, let's start practicing a little bit um, the CSS rules. If you build this exercise, you will find, let me make it smaller, in 100%, there it is. Well, you will find just a small, a very basic HTML document with no CSS whatsoever. So all these styles that you see here, they come already by default. So this is huge because it's an H1. You can right click and inspect always. I recommend, I code with this opened. I wouldn't recommend coding without this open. Like if you close it, you will have to open it again. So don't close it. And I'm, I've seen students all the time closing it and then opening it again, or maybe they don't open it again ever. So they are working in the dark because this is what gives you the actual information developers senior developers they use the debugging tools they are not like always with the with the eyes closed trying to guess what are the errors you can just see them here so you'll you, you'll get used to it so you can see here that by default an h1 is a user agent style sheet that means that you don't have a particular style sheet it comes with a user agent the user agent is google chrome in this case so Google Chrome is applying a font size of 2 EM, a margin block of 0.67 EM, a margin inline end, and all this bunch of CSS rules. Some of them I, have, I haven't even used ever, you know? So that's why the H1 is like that. If you right click and inspect the H2, it's, you see that it's a font size of 1.5 EM. You can override any of those by having your own style sheet. The style sheet in this exercise is already incorporated here. You can see it in line number six. Here it is. And then it's telling you a bunch of things, right? Set this URL as the background image of the page and repeat it vertically only. So I'm gonna copy the URL and I have to set it to the background. So the background, if I wanna change the background of a website, I will have to put body and then background and paste. No, I have to say URL parenthesis, and then I can paste the URL here. You can put quotes as well. You'll see it sometimes with quotes, but it doesn't really matter. You don't have to use the quotes. It's optional. If you don't remember about that, the exercise 0.2 talks about background. So you can, you can, uh, we are right now, we are on the exercise six. So we are in this one, practicing rules. Okay. If we now build this, you'll see the background being applied. It's repeating on to the right. That's normal behavior for all the backgrounds. If you don't want a background to repeat, you have to explicitly say it. Now change the font type to of the H128 courier and the rest of the website to Times New Roman. Okay, so it's telling me that the H1 has to be in courier. So I'm gonna say all the H1s, please have a font family of courier and then i'll say it's telling me that the rest of the website should be times new roman so the rest of the website can be just the body you know and i can say here the same thing font family and i'm gonna make it times new roman then change the well let's test it first just to see if it works don't do a lot of changes without testing you can compare the previous one with this one look there is the change Change the color of the H1 to red. Okay, so I already have the style, the, the CSS rule for that. So I'm gonna put color red. Let's test it. There you go. Previews now. Okay, change the color of, oh no, make all the H2s with an underlined. So for the H2s, I have to create a new selector because I don't have a selector that I can use. So I'm gonna put here text decoration, I think it is. I don't remember, but I think it is. Text decoration underline. Yeah, there it is. If you don't remember these rules, don't worry. You can just Google them. You can Google how to underline something and it will tell you. Then center the H1 to the middle. So that's text align center. Let's see if it works. Yep, it's centered. Then it says add the left padding to the add a left padding to the whole document of 20 pixels to make it easier to read to the whole document. So here, so padding left 20 pixels. You can you could have also said padding just like that, and then you have to you have to put top right like the clock, top right bottom left. So zero 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 
20 pixels. That's the same thing. It's a combined selector. So it, uh, if you want to read more about, uh, see more about combined selectors, you can see it in the 0 0.5, the 0 0.4.1. Then add the left padding to black. Add the white semi-transparent background. Add the white semi to the first paragraph. Okay, to the first paragraph. Three reasons you know you are learning. This no, this is not the one. You have to use whatever that that that. Three reasons. Ah, yeah, to this one. It already has an ID there. You can see it. So I can just use that ID. I can just put here pound for ID and then I have to apply the background. So I'm just going to say background and then I can put R G B A and you can see here in the documentation that it says that it's red, green, blue and alpha. Alpha is what we want. We want 0 0.2, right? So we want we want to make it white, so it's 255, 255, 255, that's white. White is a combination of all colors at the most. They start at zero, it's black, and then they end in white, that is 255 all. And then comma, 0 0.5, 0 0.2 actually. Normally we have an alpha, a white alpha in elements uh, because it's great for readability. You can see that this is easier to read than the other paragraphs because it's a bit uh, wider, so that makes it easier to read. And then I have to also apply a padding. That's also a good practice. Paddings are great because sometimes the text is just too close to the edge. There it is. You see, without the padding, with the padding. And then the last one is to change the anchor hover to to green and remove the underline. Yeah, the anchors, all of them. I have to remove the underline, right, to the hover, so hover like this. When you put something like this, like with a colon, you're saying that you want the anchor only on the hover state, not every, not all, all, any, always, just on the hover state. So I'm going to make it color green, and then I'm going to compile, and you'll see that it's not working. Ah, there it is, look on hover. Whoop. Only on hover. If you don't want to do it on hover, you can just remove the column hover. And remove the underline. I didn't do that. So removing the underline is, again, text decoration. You have to say, I guess, none. Yeah, none works. There it is. No decoration, you see? There it is. Okay, so when we compare with the picture, this is the picture that we have. You can see that it's exactly the same as the picture. If I shrink this, of course, right? Like this. If I shrink it, it will be exactly the same. If you want, you can just avoid the repetition of the background. And here in this property, we put the URL of the background. You can also put at the end, you can put no dash repeat. That way you stop repeating the background. Let's see if it works. Yep, it's not repeating. Ah, well, but I, I wanted to repeat from top to bottom, but not from left to right. So I'm just going to say, instead of not repeat, I'm going to say uh, repeat. I think it's no repeat and then repeat Y. Maybe that's going to make it repeat only from top to bottom. Nope, nothing. Let me see if I can remove the first one. I, maybe I cannot apply two repeats. And yeah, only to the left. You see, there's no repeating towards the right. Um, well. So that's it. That's some. Uh, if if you haven't done the other exercises, I would strongly recommend you do the first ones so that you get more into context.